All right, so welcome to the evolution meeting on St. Patrick's Day, March 17th, 2021. Apparently, the person who put this here, which would be me, did not recognize the year had turned. Um, it's really like the 400th day of 2020 anyway. But, um, so we talked about reviewing uh, work on change or beginning work on change request commits. And we set some goals, these being kind of our top seven in, in some manner of order, but perhaps not canonical for metrics we wanted to work on uh, during this period. And those are reflected in this spreadsheet, which change request commits is here. And apparently, I, I thought we had created a document for it. <laughs> Um, but perhaps we did not. Um, was it commits or comments? Am I reading? Commits is what I wrote. Was, uh, check our goals. Commits is what's there. And um, is, some, is somebody logged in as the chaos user where they can create a document in a chaos folder for us? Um, I can do that. Okay, that would be awesome. And then I will share this spreadsheet link in the chat as well. To paste that, we could maybe spend, I don't know, 10 minutes or so just hacking away there. Mm. Um, where do you want this, Sean? And what, I, think, it, what... I, I think I created a folder for work group evolution. You did. And I'm just creating a template. Is that what I'm doing? Yeah, because we got, apparently we got nothing. So <laughs> in the sheet, there is a link to the folder. I uh, thought there was, but. Yes, I'm... it's it's on the oh. row 11, row 11. Oh, 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 okay. Huh. All right. Well, how about that? Um, I'll just share that in chat for folks who may want to see that folder. But and I guess we should probably put a copy of Kevin. What is the current template? Do we have that somewhere? Uh, yeah. Yes, we do have that somewhere. Uh. It's, it can be found in the. Did you hear the, any of that? I, I, it could be found in the, and then there was nothing. Uh, it was like you're playing. Uh, it's, in the, it's in the governance repo. Well, that's oh. what I thought. I'm in there now and I don't see it for some reason. I'm going to keep looking. Hang on. Yeah. Oh, the search for the word template in that repository yields. Oh, wait a minute. There it is. It's in the uh, metrics repo. Uh, oh, OK. Odd. Yeah, I yeah. thought it was in governance, too. What What is in the metrics repo currently? Is there any Nothing note really. in there? Oh. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't think we I didn't think we used that. So. I mean I think this is the updated one because Georg just um did a commit to it last month. So I think it's up to date. Um uh if it's if it's up to date, then at the, the very bottom header will be the uh contributors header. Yep, that's right. Sean, you're already ahead of me. No, I'm not even. I was just putting the. Oh. Uh, I created a document. Uh, 
for that. So we have handy links. Uh, sh do, do, do you want me to create it or? No, I just, I just did. Um, All right, awesome. What's, what's the name of our, our metric? Which one are we doing now? Sorry. No, it's there. Uh, change request commits. Okay, I'm going to drop this in the chat here. Awesome. Oh, and this is, oh, okay, cool. And I'm totally fine with this being cutting edge, just leaving the font. Okay. Oh, that's better. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. Sorry. It's not your bad. No, it's, uh, it's, it is what it is. Yes. And I suppose. I, mean, I suppose we could discuss what the question is before we just start editing since we're brand new. I mean, I think, I think the question is one of the things we want to know is how many different, you know, what is the pattern of commits in a repository? <clears throat> um, we probably want to know the size of the commits. Average size. By average size, you mean lines of code or? Uh, yeah. um, could be lines of code, uh, lines of code, yeah. I mean, that would be the only measure of a commit size. Um, I think we can go back to the commit metrics, which are, so under the description, we could maybe talk about Lines added, lines deleted, uh, and um, number of file. I think number of file. I know how many files are included um, in, a, in, a, in a change request. Those are the. Oh no, no files is a separate metric. Never mind. Leave files out of this. And. Just like throwing something down. affect or affect. So Kevin, you've done a lot of thinking about change requests. Uh, what have I missed? Or what is what is wrong with this? I think we are missing the iterations, the number of patch patches within the, the chain set. 
Uh, so, just a second. I'm gonna. I'm trying to log into my computer so I can have access okay. to the document. Okay. I'm sorry. So what it says right now is change request commits enumerates each commit the lines of code on average and provides an indication of how in general repository is maintained. For example, it is well recognized that larger commits take longer to review and merge because they affect more parts of the repository's current functioning, maybe functionality. That is, that is the, at this juncture, the Sean Goggins perspective on why we care about this metric, but <clears throat> like I said, I know Armstrong and Elizabeth and Kevin and Benata, and Kevin and Benata have actually been, the, Kevin especially, I think has been doing research in this area. So a uh, quick question. So knowing the answers to these questions mm -hmm. would help a, an uh, open source maintainer in that they could gauge if, if there's a lot of like complicated commits, a lot of big commits, then they might need to have more people on their um, review team that with like deep knowledge instead of like going for like the new contributors, they might want to get some like if they're trying to grow their community, that would be an indication of where they would need to grow. Is that is that one reason why they would care about this, perhaps? Yes, I think to so. To make sure that they have enough people that can handle these complicated commits, because that's you know where it turns out most of their commits land is in the big side. Or if they're small, if there are a bunch of little tiny commits, then they can maybe grow their uh, review team and their merging team, people with access to merge. Um, and a little, you know, flatter. They don't have to be quite such deep, have deep knowledge as much, I guess. So it would help them figure out how to build out that team to address them um, in timely manner. Timely manner. I think so. And it could also... Level. And the, uh, in contrast, it could also, or or it could enable them to work to create a culture with smaller, with with differently sized pull requests. Yep. Say that with as many words as possible. <laughs> Question why we are uh, focused on the lines of code, not on the files, like on the commits. Well, so number of files in is a separate, we enumerated that, I believe, as a separate metric then the name should be then change in lines of code rather than change to... uh, okay i'm back i'm sorry about that change uh... because here right, we uh... focus on the lines of code and the name is uh name is inclusive of the files and the lines of code then if we are just focused on the lines of code then i i propose like we should change the name to the lines of code change request so it's in lines of code we do have we do have um lines of code on average uh so the way the way i've looked at these in the past is is actually lines of code added, lines of code deleted, and number of files. 
So all three of those metrics can inform the complexity of a commit. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah. uh, can someone share the document link again? Um, I'm sorry. No problem. And I, I think lines of code added and lines of code deleted are metrics that we had proposed for this this working group. Let's see. Nine. Lines of code added and lines of code deleted are current metrics. They are current metrics, yes. I believe, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> changes, code changes lines, the yeah. row yeah. 60. So what is the difference between code changes and code changes lines? I'm not sure. Both are release metrics. Fascinating question. Let's see, code changes. So these are just number of, I saw, so I'm thinking these are at the commit level and the other one is actually looking deep. I don't actually know which one I opened now. So I'm yeah, looking at the code changes lines, which includes what is the sum of number of lines touched, uh, bracket lines added, lines removed. Right. So uh, the one we are developing right now is very similar to the one we have already released, code change lines. I, I think the only difference is that we're aggregating it by pull request. So I think, I think, I think a reference to exist to the existing metrics of code, so code changes lines and code changes, or and code changes, probably makes sense. Yeah, this uh, code changes and commits is probably they're probably very similar. The lines of code is just uh, something that can occur within a commit. So the we can count commits, and then within the commit, we can count the lines of code that have changed. Uh, added, deleted. We can count the number of files that are involved. Yeah. I'm I'm more worried about the difference between change request commits and the uh, and just code changes. Uh, I'm uh, confused because uh, like well, I see the I don't see the difference in all three. I see the wordings are very similar. Things are being mixed up. Kind is so, my confusion. Well, think so, about it at a at a base level. What can I count? Right. I can. I can count the number of lines of code. I can count the number of files. I can count the number of commits. Okay. Right. The so those, those are things we can count. Those are different things we can count. Right. If but and code changes, I'm not sure what that is. Is that code for a commit? I think that's I think that's commits. I yeah. think. I, I think that's what that is. And so, so maybe we need a name change on that one. Um, I wouldn't object to that because I think code changes is a little ambiguous. Because uh, when you when you look at the, and I opened this before, but I'm gonna open it again just because I like tabs. So how many changes were made and So correspond to the part of a commit which touches files considered source code. Uh, yeah. So uh, a commit a commit is anything that So this first, is commits and yeah. calling it code changes is a little bit it doesn't it's not as helpful as is um calling it uh what it is. So, Kevin, do we have this is this is in fact the markdown that will is used to generate what's on the website? Is that is that correct? Yes. Yeah. So, um, I might. Yeah, I think I don't know. Ch changing the name of a metric can cause problems, but I don't think code. Actually, the. the the, the ambiguous nature of this title 
uh, probably makes this one really easy to change because if if code changes exists anywhere else in the uh, in in our metrics definitions, it'll just be kind of kind of a high level. Uh, it'll just it won't necessarily uh, point back to a metric. It'll just be. So, I, I agree. So code changes is um, it's ambiguous, and I'm th what if we instead of changing it straight up to commits, made it code changes either parenthetically or colon commits, so that we could people looking for this that have known it's been there because I think this metric was released over two years ago yeah. would still be able to identify would still be able to find the metric that they're familiar with and also see a more uh a clearer translation of what it is or do you suggest just changing the metric completely and maybe indicating previously known as the metric formerly known as code changes yeah i guess i guess you're I'm just thinking about, I'm not right or wrong. I don't think I'm just asking us to ask the question about creating some navigational consistency that people can count on, especially people who build tools. You know, I, I don't know what, I don't know if Paturgia calls them code changes in their software or not. I know that Augur calls them commits. And if this if this was created two years ago, this would have been created during the time that Jesus was kind of leading this group. So it, it might be a your it might be connected directly to a Baturgia naming convention, right? Or or I think Jesus had an ethic of wanting to be clear with I, I think there was, I mean, I've mentioned this a few times. We debated what is a commit for oh. a long time. And I think it maybe was an effort to avoid the controversy and, and the ambiguity might not be unintentional um, at that time. I think sometimes that ambiguity doesn't do us any favors though. And I, I think the, like we, we got burned a little bit on the, uh, well, the, the code reviews one, right? Yeah, well, that got, that certainly caused a lot of confusion. Right, and I think this one has a the lot potential of people, has the potential to cause confusion as well. People call it a commit. So, um, so there are three other metrics that use that same naming convention. Yep, I'm just looking at this. A custom label commits <laughs> right in the Biturgia visualization that we include in the metrics. So I don't think we're like out of line right. to want to do something here that that makes it clear. And I have what it, like we've changed review like code reviews wholesale to change requests. Right. Because there's a whole other thing called code reviews. Right. Um, or reviews that are people think are code reviews. In this case, code changes is not, there's no sort of conf conflict about what the, th ultimately we could figure out what this is and it's not confusing. There's no other code change that we would think of. But yeah, I, I always, I've always heard it referred to as commits. I don't know. Me too. <laughs> that's how I always refer to it because that's what it is. Um, so, I don't, I have, I have argued against changing the names of things before so that we have, again, just to communicate to people who are new to chaos or have started using chaos metrics, some consistency that we're not changing what we call things all the time because right. we're supposed to do the opposite. We're supposed to be giving people a standard uh, ontology or taxonomy for communicating about these things and what these things mean. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I kind of have two views on it, and one is uh, me too. I, I don't think least. we can. I don't think we can be. We we shouldn't be afraid to change things if it makes the if it makes our metric standards better 
and yes. more understandable. Right. Uh, and then my other my other thought on this is, uh, we're still in this phase before widespread adoption or widespread use. So if there was a time to change and really get this language correct, right now, now would be the, the time. best time. Um, and so the question is, do we change it? Do, do, do we just straight up stop referring to almost? And then there's the work dimension. So adding code changes, parentheses, commits, allows will, us to leave code changes and only change the top part of the document. So, so I will <laughs> say this. So I've been in this working group uh, almost since the beginning. You've been in this working group since almost since the beginning. I walked up hill and, and both, both of us were ways kind of, in the snow. I, I'm sorry, actually from the beginning. So, yeah. and both of us were kind of surprised that code changes existed. Yeah. So, right. and, and I see <laughs> both of you have committed in that document uh, on the GitHub. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, there's seven <laughs> contributors, and I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we looked at the history of this document, um, if if we saw. Um, older, well, there's the older buttons now work. So, January. So, but chances are there was another document uh, since this just starts in January, end of January, 2019. Chances are there's a, when we did reorganize this repository uh, a lot. So somewhere in the olden times, there was a commits document um, as well. Like if we looked, if we went back and looked at the history of the main branch, I'm sure we would find a commits.md. So the metric that we're that the metric that we were talking about prior to talking about code changes is well, actually change, change request, request commits. commits. So is there a difference between commits and change request commits? So that is what my question was actually. It's it's essentially that they are grouped in in a change request, and the change requests in practice are for mature open source projects, how all of the work is done. There are not many pull requests or change requests that occur, or not, not many commits that really get implemented outside of a change request, but there are some. Right. Um, and so the commits alone doesn't, the commits don't give us a picture of the way that work is being done, really. It's, right the grouping of them under change requests that starts to paint a picture of how the work is taking place in a repository. Mm -hmm. Could we use it as an aggregator or an aggregate, I guess, on yeah. the other? Because I we listed an aggregate as um, the time, mm -hmm. but I wonder if you could also, you know, just lump this under the other code changes as an aggregate. So it would be the it would be the most important part of if it was an aggregate in there. This would be the most important part of uh, that'd be, that aggregator would be very significant, right? And the and to what Sean just said, the rest of it would actually kind of be uh, a little a little moot. We might not be as interested. As, as a matter of fact, the way the way you described it, code changes commits. If we're just talking about commits in general. Mm -hmm don't seem that important at all. It might, as it might be something that you look at if you're, if you're curious why the project is running in kind of a weird way. So the, it's the like, way oh, that, because a lot of commits are happening outside of the change request processor. So, well, so when I, so when I pull in it, put in a port, it could be useful for understanding individual developer or, or category of developer practices, because when I do a change request, that is the accumulation of all of the commits I've made locally before I have pushed to the repository, perhaps, or for, before I've issued my change request. And there are different practices. I tend to commit a lot just so that I can go back and return to a previous version if I mess with something and it breaks a bunch of stuff. Um, other developers may not commit until they've finished like a week's of work, a week of work. 
Um, so I think there's a little bit of individual developer practice that's revealed by the commits themselves and not by the change request commits. The change request commits, I think, give you a repository level view and the commits, the commits, how many commits are happening outside of change requests is an interesting question. Um, if it's an aggregator, um, do we have the metric change request commits and simply use that to point back to code changes, parentheses or whatever, commits or just commits as an aggregation of how code is brought into the main branch of a repository. We could just change the language in code changes. So leave it as is with the name, change the language to make it more clear early on that we're talking about, we're talking about commits in general. Uh, and then we could reference. It says right here, each change corresponds to a commit. Yeah, I think we need to, I think we need to make that more explicit early on, like in the first sentence. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I totally missed that. Yeah, I do want to, I guess I want to change the name either. And I, and I, and I don't, I don't have strong, I mean, I philosophical reasons for not wanting to change it entirely, but just to add commits. And I have uh, other parts of me that are pragmatic. That, so the, it, to change it all to commits means that we have to change it, to change a lot of, of the language on every sentence in this document. Right. To add parentheses commits or colon commits, um, and parentheses commits is probably more clear because code changes colon commits implies there are other kinds of code changes and we're actually explicitly saying there are, there are not. And then as far as this is change requests- spent so much time talking about this metric for the first six months of this project. <laughs> right. Uh, and then as far as change request commits go, I think change requests are important enough that that deserves its own metric. So I realized that we, we could address change request commits within this document, but I think, it, I think it deserves its own metric because change requests are such a important part of uh, the process, right? Yeah, yeah, commits existed before change requests. And, um, so uh, I suppose what I would suggest is we make, uh, so this, when we make a change, if we make it parentheses commits, then that's a change to a published metric is the, like if it was like me, I would just edit this document, add parentheses commits and, and commit it, but then we would have to place it under review. And if I, if we did that right here, then the next time you run a publication of metrics, which might be before the next release, it would appear. So does this, this, does this change go back under review then presumably? Yes. Um, and so what is the right way to put this change back under review? Uh, so I, I, I think, I think we'd have to put it under review for the name change itself. And if that goes through, then we would have to, then we would go and we would edit the document to accommodate the name change. So perhaps, so I don't worry. I mean, alter, alternately, we could change the name and- No, I'm uh, not gonna change anything here, don't worry. Yeah. I'm doing control, I'm just copying this. And then if I go here, I think I agree with you. The problem is this, this will have, this will be, there'll be discussion mm -hmm. and ultimately, like if we say we want to change this to commits right now, the odds of it actually, the odds of it changing to commits aren't that good because it's going to go through review and it'll end up being, you know, be debated something for else, right? all of time. <laughs> yeah. And actually, uh, this 
uh, reference, we've eliminated the reference implementations under this working group uh -huh. just because I, they were too hard to maintain. I wonder if uh, commit code changes in parentheses would be more accurate. Um, it could be. It would keep the um, or more descriptive. Are do, are we committing ourselves then to changing the word code changes throughout the document, or can we just leave that? I, I, actually, if we if we do it the way you just said it here, we we may not have to edit the document, right? Because the code changes is the code changes then becomes the it's the the parenthetical code word for commits right yep i mean i think i still think we would have to i mean if we 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 should we should put it back under community review as a revision right do we want to prior just, to taking it to review do we want to bring it up in the general meeting I think I think the thing the question for the general meeting is when we want to change the name of a metric to create more clarity, what practice do we recommend for doing that? So in, I mean, I, and there's might not there's not a standard answer because in cases where it causes confusion to have like reviews, um, <clears throat> then we had to change the whole name. In cases where it's not causing confusion, but it's just a little too ambiguous because we all think about commits, but our metric is cone changes and we just want to parenthetically state that it's commits. Um, and then, you know, like strike out in here, I, did, I struck out this reference implementation, which no longer exists. Um, And we can probably add some updated visual. I mean, there's things we, there's other small uh, updates we can make to the metric if we're going to put it under review as well. But I'd be satisfied with just uh, adding parenthetically commits and then getting rid of the, th the reference to a reference implementation that no longer exists. exists. I have actually uh, often wondered if we could create a process to review some of these metrics after they've been released for a period of time, because this one is out of date and, uh, and does, does need some attention. I don't, I don't think it's any more out of date than when it was released. It, no, it, I just like that. Yeah. The, we're not doing the, uh, uh, the, what was the down, down below the, uh, yeah. Uh, What's it yeah, yeah, this this reference implementation. Yeah, the reference Python. implementation. We're not doing that anymore. Does that even does that go anywhere? If you click on that, I'm pretty sure it doesn't. It was yeah. under implementations. I'm pretty sure we got rid of the implementations directory. Yeah, we did. Yeah, because it was again, it was t way too hard to keep those so that you could download the Jupyter notebook and still run it. Yeah. Um, really, mostly be because they relied on. Uh, data and library, you know, we had a library dependency issue yeah. with it. They say in every, every two years, it might be nice to do a, like a spring cleaning just to check and make sure that the, everything's still uh, good. Yeah. And I guess every metric is, every metric just when it's released goes into a release basically. So this this release is over here. That's just from, that's organic to the process. Not like we, we actually didn't change. I don't think we actually changed anything. No, no, not me, not anymore. <clears throat> so the, the first, uh, the first two reviews we did, uh, every time the metrics were released, every metric went to the review process. So every single review, this metric would have been reviewed again. Uh, okay. However, uh, obviously that's no longer practical. No, we've changed it. Yeah. So the only metrics that go on when we change to the continuous review process, the
the only metrics that go under review are metrics that are that are being released. So there is no process currently to review metrics that have been released prior. Uh, and that is something I think we should think about uh, just when it reaches a, like I said, when it reaches a certain point, you know, and this is a, and by the way, I'm, I'm sidetracking us completely because this isn't what we're talking no, about. It's, uh, it's, no, uh, it's, it's, <laughs> it's an important thing because a similar situation happened in the value group also because there was a need to revise one of the metrics. So having a proper like uh, uh, outline of how to do a revision of an ex already lead metric is an important aspect, I think. Just for the um, record, I put both of those issues on the agenda for the next meeting, the spring cleaning issue and the re, uh, putting a continuous release under review before it goes into continuous release. Changes and the, to metrics. And, like, quite, and really the like, thing is like adding a parentheses to a name, like is there, we probably want to put it under community review so that we don't appear um, yeah. like we're taken over and not like doing things without community review. I don't want to create that impression ever. Yeah, oh, I think a name change always has to go through community review. Yeah, uh, so this is already released and it's going to go under community review. Yeah, um, I, th I think right now, let's just treat that as a, uh, yeah, change it to, uh, change it to community review. Slide over here. But the, the important, the important uh, thing that we came to is that it is a separate metric from change request commits. So we can work on change request commits. <laughs> we just have yeah. to be clear on the language. Uh, and then additionally, we want to reference the code change files and code change lines as metrics in the change request commits. So when we talk about the uh, when we talk about what those commits can look like, we need to reference these two metrics. Am, am I correct thinking like change request commit inclusive of a lines change, files change, and uh, what is the third point? So, is it an umbrella metric? I think I think um, so. Like leaving code changes files and yeah, I, I think leaving those three things like that. Oh, you know what? You, you don't even need parentheses. Just say change code changes commits, code changes lines, code changes files. It's files it matches the naming convention of the other two already. I, I actually really like that. And then when we, and then when we look into, and then, so then when we do uh, the change request commits, we just need to reference those other metrics as they're named and pro and provide links. Fair. So uh, and then to your, to the question that you had asked the nod, so change request commits isn't really, it's not really an umbrella thing. It's, no, it is a, I, it's something we can count. We can count those change request commits. However, those other metrics can be used to describe the, ch describe these change request commits, right? So not really, I, I wouldn't call it a, I don't think it's a, uh, what do we call the, uh, I don't think it's an umbrella or not an umbrella metric. What's the, uh, I think this is still an atomic metric. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's like, I so, was thinking in terms of composite metric. Yeah, it's not, it's not a composite these. metric. Maybe I'm stuck in differentiating these three with that one, so. So I think other, other metrics can inform what these change request commits look like, but, okay. it, but this metric itself is not a composite. Okay. So I um, I added a uh, basically in the link to metric issue I put a note released metric and proposed change mm -hmm. to the Google Doc so that I mean that seems useful to have both of them in there. Yep. 
Uh, and then we and then proposed. we may want to clean up the language a little bit more. Do you think? Um, proposed language. Proposed change. March twenty twenty one. Um. So so actually do more editing on uh, code changes uh, to see if there are other things that we want to update. Yeah, I think that there are two things. One, we need to we need to make sure that it is differentiated from change request commits. I think it clearly is. There's there's uh -huh. no mention of change requests in here. I don't think. Okay, but we so we, we could we could also so we could also reference change request commits in here as a you know an example of code. So change. that would almost be. Um, another heading of related metrics and i think we've put that in in some of our metrics i feel, I feel like common has done that has specific explicitly referenced other metrics that are aggregated or used in the aggregate or or like the, i can't remember there was one in common that they the they made and then there were some specific implementations of it in evolution when we referenced the common metric. Oh yeah, actually we could just we could just reference it in aggregators. So in aggregators we could put change request commits and then just link out to the change request commits document. Or in the reference section we refer to the other metric. Like something like that, Kevin is, is that what you had in mind? And we are at uh, two minutes over time, so my uh, time administration. Has. Uh, and then add the uh, add the, uh, the the markdown brackets so that we can we can add the uh, URL link to this when. Uh, All right. Yep. Very good idea. We, we don't know what it is yet, but uh, yeah. Yeah. And I think, I think there'll be, a, there'd be a similar change that we would propose to code request or code changes lines because that's going to be referenced in the uh, in this pull request or, or merge request commits as well. But the uh, the lines of code and the commits are also a factor. So and this is the, hey. the sum number of lines touched lines added plus lines removed. Do we need to define lines added and lines removed somewhere? Um, or is just uh, there's or is just this, is this sum, the sum is the only thing that's important or are there um, other ways that this is interesting? I think, oh, I think, uh, yeah, here the type of it's added, remove and white space are the two the things that both Grimoire Lab and Augur measure. Okay. Yeah, and we are at the end time. So I am going to say uh, I'll put this on the agenda for uh, discussion in the next meeting. And thank you all for uh, dis a good discussion this morning and talk to you soon. All right. Talk right. to you later. Thank you. Right.